Hey YouTube, Captain Tech here, and in today's video, I'll walk you through how to create data visualizations in Squarespace with your underlying data. Um, and what I have in front of me here is an actual example visualization I was able to build in Squarespace. And what's neat about it is actually, if you hover over it, it's interactive. It actually gives you insights about the underlying data. So let's go ahead and actually start from the very beginning and walk through how to actually build this. So the very first step is to actually start with the underlying data and to put it within an Excel document. So over here, I have some example data. I've gone ahead and actually put in the column headers. So in column A, I have the year and all the different years. And then I have the performance of Bowery Labs throughout all three years, as well as the performance of the competitor. And it's really important that we have the data in this format with the column headers at the very top. Um, otherwise, it's going to be a little bit difficult to, to build this out within Squarespace. Now, the next step after we've done this is to actually save this as a CSV. And of course, we can do that by clicking on File, Save As. And then whenever we go to Save As, we just have to make sure that the file format is changed to a CSV document. So we'll go ahead and change it to a CSV. Now the next step will be slightly different, but pretty much the same depending on whether you have a PC or a Mac. If you have a Mac, what you'll have to do is go ahead and find that CSV, right click on it, open with, and then open with text edit. If you're on PC, you would follow the exact same steps. You would right click, you would open with, but instead of text edit, you would do notepad. And once we open it up, we actually find the CSV file, but in text format. And what we'll need to do is actually go ahead and copy that text there. And now we can actually proceed with building in our chart. So now that we've copied that, we'll go back to Squarespace. I'm gonna click on edit and I'll create essentially a duplicate of this here. So I'll go ahead and click on this plus and what we'll search for is chart within Squarespace. So we'll choose the chart option. And now to actually add that data that we entered into Excel, we'll need to go to this import slash export tab. So we'll click on that. I'm gonna clear out the sample information here and I'll go ahead and paste the data we just copied a moment ago and we'll click on update. And it's gonna ask us, hey, it's gonna overwrite the data. We'll hit confirm. And now actually, if you look below us, you'll see um, the, the data actually got inputted there. We'll go ahead and actually save this just so we have a copy of it. So uh, we've done the first part. The data now is clearly within um, the chart. Uh, and on top of that, there is a bit of flexibility in terms of customizing this to make it um, to, to look different based on your needs. So I'll go ahead and click on the edit button again, and we can go in and play around with it. If we go to the design section, um, we do have the option to enter a title for our chart. So we can give it a brief description. And we can also add a legend. And this legend, of course, is pulling in from our data set um, based on these, these numerical values here, those column headers, which is pretty neat. Next, we can change the color palette. There are some default uh, colors we can choose from from the drop down here. So based on what suits your, your need, uh, we'll have to select those. Unfortunately, it doesn't allow you to customize them uh, to specific colors of our choosing, but at least they do have uh, a few options here to choose from. And then lastly, I wanted to walk through the option of using different types of charts. So right now, this is using, of course, a bar chart, which is good for categorical data. But if we have continuous data, um, we also have the option of using a line chart. So we can actually see the same sort of visualization um, in a continuous format. And it also has this option of a pie chart. And of course, since pie charts are really a snapshot at a single moment in time, our underlying data would have to be limited to really one snapshot in order for that to really work. So uh, the pie chart option is there, but your data would have to be modified a little bit in order for it to display properly. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please let me know. Your feedback is super important. It lets me understand whether or not these sorts of videos are helpful and whether or not I should continue to make videos like this in the future. And with that, thanks for watching and take care.